What is up, YouTube? It's Craig or Hutch here with a video series on digital to analog and analog to digital conversion. Um, seeing as I work with audio professionally, this is a topic that I'm really comfortable with and I really enjoy. And um, hopefully, I'll be able to do a decent job at presenting the information to you. Um, so, what we're dealing with. <coughs> is say in the real world you have some analog signal perhaps it's an audio signal or a video signal or any kind of analog signal right and we want to take this signal and record it digitally say in our computer's memory right so say we want to we want to end up with something like this this is our computer's memory right here. All right, so that's what we're going to want to end up with. So, so we can take this information and convert it back later on to our original analog signal, maybe for reproduction. Say it's audio. Say it's this represents a piece of music, and you want to play it back on your CD player or from your MP3 player. Um, so this stage right here, we're going from analog to digital. This stage right here, we're going from digital back to analog. And we're going to be looking at the steps involved. So let me change my color here. What we're going to... For now, we're going to have a, simply a black box. Uh, we're not going into the, the design of these things quite yet. Right? So um, we're going to call this V out, and this is going to be a digital signal. And over here, this is our V in. I should have labeled my axes over here. So uh, this is going to be time here. And uh, so we've already defined here that we're measuring voltage, right? So this is V of T here, right? So. Uh, we have our analog signal coming in to our analog to digital converter. And on the output, let's say that this is an 8-bit, we'll go into that, converter. Uh, we're going to come out with something, 0001, right? So uh, this piece of information. This is our computer's memory. Memory. Right? So we're going to store this bit of information. I'll explain this dot in one second. Oh, let me use a different color here. All right? So this whole word, this 8 bit word, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, yep, stored up in our computer's memory. So that later on, we can go from digital back to analog and uh, get our signal back out. Actually, this should look something a little more. It should come down. Let's just, eh, that's ugly. I'm trying to keep it on the screen for you guys. Okay. So this part we're going to address in a separate video. What we're looking at right now is simply analog, our analog to digital conversion this process to go from analog to the digital world. And from my little diagram here, our A to D converter box, um, this loosely <laughs> represents our signal up here. So let's say we're looking at this point. The signal's coming in, and at some point of time, we are going to capture this piece of information. We're going to capture, you know, what the voltage is, our V in, at this point in time. Let's say that represents right here. All right, so that's that's our Vn of t for now. Vn t it is right here. So this is t. Let's call it t1. t1 starts there. All right, so this bit again, Vn t1. This bit of information is going to go to our converter, and it's going to come out as a binary word. Um, what we're ultimately going to have in the end of this whole process 
are many, many, many of these samples. What we're doing is we're sampling our signal here, our analog signal, at a specific frequency, recording the values for V in of T at these intervals and restoring them as a binary word. So the question is, how do we accomplish this? And it's actually not very hard at all in theory. In practice, the design, that's a different issue. So we said that we're looking specifically at this point in time, T1. And the first thing we have to define here is what our maximum voltage is going to be. We need this information. So let's say it's 5 volts. And uh, we have a name for that. That's, that's VFS, right? So VFS. FS is just full scale. So this would represent a full scale signal from here to here. That's as high as you can go. If, say, you have a sample point up here, you're going to lose that information. If you have a point up here, what's going to happen is you're going to sample it, and it's, it's called clipping. And maybe this is getting too far into it, but your signal will be truncated here, and you're not going to have this information. It's going to be recorded as VFS. That's it. That's as high as you can go. So um, we have two pieces of critical information at this point. Um, those two pieces of information, let me choose another color, is our full scale voltage, the maximum value of V in that we can record. Uh, we know, because we've defined that as 5 volts. Okay. The other thing that we know that's very important is that we're converting to an 8-bit word. And you'll see how this 8 bits translates into our resolution. And where, you know, if we're talking about audio, where high definition audio comes from, um, what the standards are for CD audio. So, so CD, standard CDs, you're using a 6 bit word to represent your voltages. Um, HD audio, typically you're looking at 24 bits. The more bits you have, the more resolution you have. And y your, your quantization error, which is what we'll get into that is is reduced by the more resolution you have and the more bits of data you have to store this information. Okay, so we know we have our full scale value is 5 volts and um, we have 8 bits to store this information. Um, you probably, you know, 8 bits is 2 to the 8th 8 bits of information. All right, so that's 256. We should all know that by this point, I hope. Uh, so, we have 256 quantization steps to represent all 5 volts. Easy. So, let me try to um, build a little bit of intuition around this. Say we have a scale here. My little scale. All right. And it's from 0 to 5 volts. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to slice. Let me grab a different color. We're going to slice this thing up, you know, so that's. We're going to take this scale and slice it up into 256 segments. This is not nearly 256 segments. I can't draw that many. Um, you know, if I did, if I, <laughs> if I did something like a two-bit converter, you know, then two, this would be two bits of information. You have four quantization steps. But do something a little more realistic with an eight-bit signal. So we're just going to pretend that you know, dot dot dot, whatever. We have 256 slices here. 256 bits. So, and, and, you know, we're quantizing this 5-volt signal. We're going to end up quantizing 5 volts here into bits of inf 256 bits of information. So, and, and from this, the first thing we have to do is determine, uh, that's a really bad arrow, sorry, um, how much voltage 
this distance here represents. And that's really easy to do. So we have 5 volts. Let me grab another color yet again. I like changing colors up. So we have 5 volts that we are slicing up into 256 bits. Um, let me just use my calculator so I don't make a mistake. So what we're looking at then is 0 0.0195 volts per bit, right? Bits. Now this is important. That means each one of these steps here, from here to here, represents an increase of 19.5 millivolts. 19.5 right. milli per bit. And we have 256 bits. So each step on our scale heel represents an increase of 19.5 millivolts. Um, and this is very important. And so if we had a if we had our digital signal here, right? And let's say our digital word is very simply 0 2 3 4 5 6 7. That is our 8-bit word. Right? Um, so that represents this bit of information right here. We're representing a 1 in binary. This is just translates to the number 1 in base 10. So that represents right here. So that correlates to a voltage of 19.5 millivolts, right? So this is our least significant bit here. And over here also, we call this the most significant bit. A least significant bit represents a change of 19.5 millivolts. This piece of information is critical okay and um, we, we again so so far we've defined our VFS over here our full-scale voltage as 5 volts this piece of information is important as you can see we've used it to define how we're gonna slice up this our VFS by 256 or steps or 8 bits um, so by doing so through division simple division it's real easy we've determined that our least significant byte here in this signal represents 19.5 millivolts. So we're going to record that. This is another critical piece of information. LSB is equal to 19.5 millivolts. Okay, so we have all the information we need now. We're going to put a star up here because this stuff is important. We have all the information we need now to start doing our analog to digital conversion. And I'm going to stop the video here. So come back and we'll finish up in part two of this series.